Hello everyone and welcome to this, my video on Pythagoras in three dimensions. Three dimensions? Are we mad trying to do this? Well, maybe just a little bit. My name's Darren from Maths Guru. Thank you very much for joining me. You're going to say, where's Maths Guru? It's that little corner of the interweb where you can basically download everything I'm about to do. Well, maybe not so much the videos, but certainly the lesson notes behind me. And I've got exam questions and you can watch all the videos in this series and smash maths. But before I get started, do me a massive favor. Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel? No one watches these videos. No one out there cares about maths. And the fact that you're watching it is deeply, deeply, deeply awesome. So if you can subscribe, um, I get a real buzz at the end of the day when I get an extra three subscribers. So thank you very much in advance for doing that. What are we going to do today? As I say here, we are pretty much going to apply all of the knowledge from the previous video. What do you mean, what previous videos? There's loads of them on mathsguru.com. And I'm going to effectively turn all of our 2D work into three dimensions, as it says on the... Uh, but again, our recap. If you remember, Pythagoras allegedly came up with a formula that said c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And what does that mean? Well, basically, the hypotenuse length, if I square it, is equal to the sum of my other two sides squared as well. And I love explaining this, but really what happens is if we take three squares and join them together, certain squares will join edge to edge. And what we find is that the area of this square, which is a squared, plus the area of this squared, which is b squared, actually equals the area of this square, which is C squared, for right angle triangles only, all right? So again, there are alternative ways of doing that, and my first couple of videos sort of show you how to do that. I generally don't mind which way you do it, as long as you get the right answer and show some sort of working out. Now, as I've said previously, there are literally triangles everywhere. When I built my house in my previous video, oh, I didn't build a house in a previous video, I just talked about it, then I told you that traders use right angle triangles. And if you look around, there are triangles everywhere. I'm looking out the window of my apartment at the moment, and I can see triangles absolutely nowhere. I've just lied, what am I doing? But back to this, there are triangles everywhere in these diagrams, and what your job is, is to try and find them. And what I say is wherever there is a diagonal line, wherever there is a diagonal line, somewhere on a diagram, you can turn it into a right angle triangle, yeah? So if I was to draw a diagonal line here, so long as I know I join the ends together with one horizontal line and one vertical line, then basically I have a right angle triangle, and that wasn't vertical in any way, shape, or form. And again, we can find the length of those lines, which goes all the way, believe it or not, into VCE maths. Yes, methods, mathematical methods over here in Australia, actually one of the first chapters gets you to create and find the length of um, lines between two points. It's very, very easy, but it's confusing everybody. Why? Because we give you a really confusing formula but we'll leave that to one side because we're not doing VCE. Triangles are everywhere. So if we look here, if I can join two points of a cuboid together, I can turn that into a right angle triangle. Here is a pyramid. If I draw my height, my perpendicular height, and one of the slant edges together, I get a right angle triangle. If I take the length here and the length all the way across the middle of that um, shape there, I get a right angle triangle. So wherever there is a line that is slanted, you can turn it into a right angle triangle, which is pretty much the trick here. Now, finding the length of sides actually may require two calculations to take place. And these are normally the more complicated questions. It builds on your understanding of, can you find right angle triangles in a number of different ways? So if I was to look here, you would probably turn around and say, well, yes, there is a right angle triangle. I've got a slanted line from one corner directly through to the other, so I can turn that into a right angle triangle here. But how would I find that length there? Well, to be able to do that, you'd be able to, you'd need to know that height there, yes, which we would know, because the chances are they're going to tell me the dimensions of the cube. But how on earth am I going to find that length there? Well, again, what you've now got to imagine is that you're looking straight down at the top of the cube. And can you see here, there is a slanted line? Ah, oh, well, a slanted line can be turned into a right angle triangle. So if I was to look straight down on the top, and we call that point A and that point B, let's call that point A and that point B, I have a slanted line. Well, if I've got a slanted line, I can turn that into a right angle triangle and I can find my length AB if I know this length here and that length there. Well, am I going to be able to find that length there? Yes, of course, because again, these 
are effectively just the side lengths of my cube. So we would probably have to find out this length here, then we would know that length there to help me find that length there. And there are tricks to be able to do this as well. Now, again, what I'm gonna say here is we can use surds to make our life a lot, lot easier. And if you remember, a surd is basically a number that is left in terms of a square root. So if I had a right angle triangle, for example, and I found out, uh, and we were trying to find this length here, and I knew that this was say four and four. So let's imagine my cube is four by four by four, and it's cube, so it's gotta be all sides the same. Uh, can I find out what C is? Well, yes, I can. C squared is gonna be four squared plus four squared, which is gonna be 16 plus 16 which is gonna be 32, so c squared is equal to 32. So that length there, I'm actually better leaving it as the square root of 32, rather than working out that as a decimal. Why? Well, imagine what's gonna happen next. We're then gonna use the length I've just found across the bottom here to find this triangle here. So if I now draw that triangle there, that bigger triangle, and let's say, let's call this A, B, and C. So this is A to B, and this is now A, B, and C. Well, we're gonna have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared for my big triangle. So we're looking at my big triangle here. Well, do I know the length of this here? Well, yes, I do. It's the root of 32, and leaving it as a third means that this value here, this root 32, is actually my value of A. So I'm now gonna do the root of 32 squared. Well, what's the square root of a square? Or the square of a square root? Well, it stays. So actually, by doing that, this bottom number here would just become 32. I wouldn't have to worry about crazy values, yeah? And what's my value of BC? What's my value here of BC? Well, it's the height of my cube, which is four. So there would be four squared, which would be 16, and then we'd be able to go on. Now, maybe that was a bit too fast for this particular video, but I'm just trying to give you an indication that you're gonna probably have to do two calculations in one.